Hey, I think we're live. Hey, everyone. It's me, Bailey, of Farmer Bailey. Um, I like talking about new products. You know, I like finding new products for everyone. So today we're actually talking about um, a lot of new things coming. New vendors we're working with, new products. Um, there's a lot to talk about over the next month or so, but we're going to kind of take it in bite-sized chunks. Before we get going, um, cheers, everyone. It's five o'clock somewhere, like right here in Madeira, Portugal. Um, happy lunchtime to my friends on the east coast of the U.S. and good morning to my friends on the west coast. Um, today we're having, I believe it's called a Jungle Bird, which is a classic cocktail with Campari, rum, pineapple juice, maybe something else. Um, Thanks to Felicia for the suggestion. Mm, lovely. <clears throat> As you know, Monday, October 2nd, is when we restock the store, put new varieties in place, um, and we want you to be prepared. I know a lot of you have been asking for quite a long time, like, when can I order, when can I order? The reason we generally start this time of year, um, a lot of the seed hasn't even been fully harvested in the other parts of the world. You know, seed is grown all over the place. Um, so we really like to make sure that we are fairly confident we're going to have the seed or the cuttings or the tissue culture to produce your product before we offer them to you. This can be a really long, <clears throat> a long process. You know, uh, we'll talk about hellebores later. The hellebores that we will start selling on Monday for shipping in 2024 we ordered more than a year ago. So the production time on some of these things um, is just really long. Um, the more we are doing this, the more we're listening to you, the more, you know, the better we're getting at the scheduling and making sure we get our order in, in time, even if that happens to be six months, a year, a year and a half out. So uh, thanks for your patience. We always, um, I always want to hear what you're looking for. I'm I'm always out there looking around for things for you. But if you've got if you've got ideas, always let me know. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go through my list here. The first thing to note is that the website is now in preview mode for spring. It's gonna look a little bit different when you go to the site because you're essentially be able to you go to farmerbailey.com and you, then you can choose which store you're gonna shop from. The first one is Grow and Sell. Grow and Sell is our, you know, our flagship program. We've been with Grow and Sell for many years now. Um, we're not going anywhere. We're introducing uh, quite a few new products with them. We'll talk about that today. <clears throat> You'll also see that we are working with Plug Connection in Southern California. They are in Vista, California, not far from San Diego. This is going to save shipping costs um, for you West Coast people by quite a lot. They've gone up so much just in the time that Farmer Bailey has been in business. Um, and sustainable, from a sustainability standpoint, um, I think it just makes sense for us to have some plugs being produced on the West Coast. It's not 100% the same, but it's a lot of the same items that you are used to from Grow and Sell. Um, so we're excited to talk about, uh, talk about them. We'll talk about uh, Three Porch Farm too in Georgia, um, Comer, Georgia. Um, good friends of ours, you know, friends of the ASCFG, if you've been around for a little while, um, they grow some really beautiful heirloom mums. Um, so you can actually go on and preview their availability. All of this will go live on Monday, October 2nd at noon Eastern time. That's nine Pacific. If something says it's out of stock right now, that just means you can't order it right now because we're still confirming our inventory on a lot of these products. So don't worry, you haven't missed it. Um, you actually, you're early to the party, so don't... Uh, don't worry about that at all. On Sunday at noon Eastern, um, the store will probably just go dark for about 24 hours while we make all these changes, get all the inventory up and running, do a lot of testing to make sure that these new programs are, uh, are functioning correctly. It's uh, an astonishing number of little data points you have to get correct for you know, these e-commerce platforms to work. So uh, I've been a little cross-eyed all week just from looking at spreadsheets and the back end of our system. And it's, uh, well, I don't think I've ever needed this one uh, at five o'clock quite like I do today. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about Plug Connection for a little bit. They have a really lovely big facility um, in Southern California. They are well-equipped. Some great things about them. They don't have to heat their greenhouses so much because they're in a naturally warm place. Um, 
They're really set up to grow in two sizes. They grow 288s and 128s. So we're accustomed to 128s. We sell a lot of those through Grow and Sell. 288s might be a little smaller than some of you are uh, accustomed to. It's really just, uh, you know, you might need, you might want to bump them up on arrival if you're that kind of person who wants to, uh, you know, give your get, get your plugs a little bit early, grow them a little to a little bit larger size before they go in the field. You can do that if you have really nice beds prepared that aren't, you know, the texture of your soil is nice. It's fine. Um, you can probably plant a 288 directly into the soil, but that you need to be you need you need, you need to be comfortable doing that, you know, because they're they're really quite small. Um, we're going to offer some more tips as we go forward. Um, 288s are great because you get 288 plants um, in one tray. You know, if you're growing at scale, that really does help keep the cost down. Um, and plug connection ships four or five trays per, per box. I know it's kind of a little hard to think about. So a 288 tray is, just a, is quite short. A 128 is just a little bit taller. So in their shipping box, they can fit five of these 288s in one box, or they can fit four of the 128s. So uh, just keep in mind, if you're really trying to maximize your shipping value, um, you can get a lot of plants, you know, five trays of 288s, you know, you're getting close to 1500 plants um, just for one shipping charge. Um, even though they're growing in California, they can ship all over the world, all over the US. Um, and even though, you know, our good friends at uh, Grow and Sell are in Pennsylvania, they're continuing to ship all over the country as well. So take some time and look around and see who's got the products you want. Um, and plan your order accordingly. <clears throat> um, you can go on and look at three porch farms, heirloom chrysanthemums. I'm gonna go on a little tangent for a second on, now what is an heirloom chrysanthemum? Um, well, as the word heirloom implies, it's an old variety. They've been around since before we had, you know, this quarantine issue in the US uh, on bringing in varieties of chrysanthemums from around the world. They're a plant that's been bred in Asia for thousands of years. Um, a lot of these varieties are actually British exhibition varieties. So they were bred for having a specific petal shape or a certain size or just certain drama that, you know, uh, if you're an exhibition chrysanthemum grower, you could win the blue ribbon. Um, they also tend to be tall and long stems, so they're good for cutting. And we have them in the U.S. You know, we're a bit lacking in chrysanthemum varieties in the U.S. because of this... Um, import restriction that the USDA put on mums, I believe in the 70s or 80s, it's been around for quite a while. <clears throat> um, that whole landscape might be changing, but for now we do have um, these heirloom mums from Three Porch Farm and through Grow and Sell, we'll keep selling the same mums that we've been selling for the last two years. Um, these are uh, the ones from Syngenta that were originally meant to be potted pot mums like florist mums, but they do happen to grow really tall. I've gotten some nice photos from a handful of you lately uh, showing me how big your mums are getting. Um, unfortunately, I got an email from someone who uh, didn't you know, stake and support them quite enough and they all toppled over. It's really hard to get a plant to stand back up once it's fallen over. So if you're looking like they're getting a little top heavy, go put another you know, ring of twine around them. Probably a little bit late to get net on them, but uh, just keep an eye on them. Because once those buds, the buds are swelling right now with the, the shortening days of autumn, um, you don't want those, you don't want your plants falling over. That's just a, a sad thing after you've babied them for a few months now. Um, so in contrast between the Syngenta mums, those are patented. You're not allowed to propagate those. That would be illegal. The heirloom mums, there is no patent. Um, you can propagate freely. So what we are really selling you are, is stock plants. You know, they come uh, packed three per variety. You need to order in multiples of three. And we can fit four varieties in a box. This is all on the website. You can read all about this. Um, but the idea is that you get these heirloom mums, and then you take cuttings off those. And you can probably root those and take cuttings off of those. So with each order, there will be really detailed directions on how to do this. Um, and actually one week from today, we will go live with Steve and Mandy O'Shea from Three Porch Farm. Um, that'll be fun just because they're such good friends of ours, but they've really become quite mum experts <clears throat> and they'll tell us uh, everything they know. So between now and then, if you have questions on uh, growing heirloom mums, uh, by all means, send them our way. As you're looking at the new website, um, every, 
each store will have a section that says everything you need to know. Um, shipping information, pat, you know, boxing, uh, lead times, all of this information is there. So take, just take the time between now, um, it'll be visible between now and Sunday noon Eastern time. You've got a few days to really look it over, see, see what's different from before, make sure your old favorites are all still there. Like I said, don't worry if it says that it's out of stock, it will most likely be restocked on Monday. We just can't keep inventory during a period when we aren't accepting orders. Um, you can only order from one vendor at a time. So place your grow and sell order or place your plug connection order and then move on to the three porch or you, know, you, can't, you can't have simultaneous carts going. Uh, some people get a little bit excited uh, on these kind of ordering days. We try not to have, in an ideal world, we have an unlimited amount of everything. That's just not the way things work. Um, as I mentioned, like these hellebores, we had to place an order a year, year and a half ago. So I don't know exactly what you want a year and a half in advance. I, I have a good hunch, but we do our best to guess how much product we might need. Something you can do to help if you get to the store after, you know, even now, you can go on and click that little notify me button. That'll let us know that you are a person who is interested in this. We will email you when it comes into stock. But then it also lets us know how many people out there are looking for this. Uh, there's no, no obligation to buy. There's no nothing other than you send us your email address. It keeps a little tally that we have one more person interested in, you know, variety X. And then that'll help us with our forecasting in future years. So we'll come closer to meeting your demands. <clears throat> um, we really do appreciate the people who have been using that functionality. Um, it's, you know, you see it all over, all over e-commerce and, and uh, we're understanding why it's a really helpful tool for us. So some things you can do before you, you know, go on your shopping spree. Um, make sure you don't have any items in your cart. And sometimes you have an old item from a previous session when you were looking. Um, that might hold you up and block you from checking out. Um, so go on and get rid of that before you get started. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of good advice anytime you go to the store. Sometimes people will put an item in their cart that has a, you know, you always have to select your shipping date, but sometimes that date is expired. So you will maybe three weeks later come back and you still have it. It'll still show that you can get it for that date, but you can't. Um, you, you know, it'll even let you check out with that. And then we have to get in touch with you and be like, oh, by the way, you can't have this for week 10 anymore. The earliest we can do that is week 13. So always start with a clean cart. Um, you can go on if you have maybe a new address or a different shipping address than billing address. Um, you can go on and update your addresses. If you just go to your profile, you can add additional addresses. So you don't have to worry about filling that out in the heat of the moment if you think, uh, I'll tell you what products you're gonna, you might wanna prioritize ordering and which ones you can just calm down and take a breath. <clears throat> um, but you can go on to load your shipping address um, or any new addresses into the store so we have that. Um, if you're a Vermont customer, we do need a tax form for you. We are incorporated in Vermont. Um, so we do need to know that you are officially uh, registered with the state doing, uh, doing business um, in order to not charge you sales tax. <clears throat> So you can go on, you can put, there's a few items still in the grow and sell catalog that are available. You could put them in there as though you're gonna check out. It'll prompt you to fill out a form. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I actually did it for our account today because I wanted to test the checkout process. Um, and it automatically applies that and then you can, then you're ready to start ordering. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we just wrote, uh, don't panic and take, take a deep breath. Um, there are some things that are going to sell out on opening day, but I don't want you to worry too much about that because we have a lot of other great products. It's mostly our perennials. Um, I'm going to go through some things that might be in short supply, even though we've this year we have a much bigger variety than we had for perennials last year. And we have a lot more of each of them than we did last year. So it won't sell as quickly. I know some items sold out within minutes last year. Um, that's not what we want. You know, I want people to make informed decisions. I want them to read the descriptions. That's why we have, you know, set up this kind of preview, not week, preview few days. So you can, you know, plan, plan your ordering accordingly. Um, the things that might sell out will be mostly perennials and uh, one other product that we'll talk about in one second. Um, already gone over that. Yeah, 
I'm just going to reiterate, read that everything you need to know for each vendor that you're interested in ordering from, and then ask us questions. Also, if you see problems on the website either now or you know, as you're ordering on Monday, let us know. Um, the more precise you can be, um, that's better. And tell us what product, maybe what set of variables. We, we really try to troubleshoot everything. But like I said, there's just very many thousands of data points that all have to be perfect. And sometimes it could even just be a extraneous, you know, punctuation mark in the wrong place that throws off uh, the whole computer system. So we don't think that's going to happen. But if you see something, we really do appreciate you letting us know. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the website is just a way for us to communicate more easily with you about what you want to order. And that's why we spend so much time on it. Okay, let's talk about Grow and Sell because that's where most of our new products are coming from today. Um, oh, we got some news that Grow and Sell started shipping their fall perennials and a handful of orders did go out with styrofoam peanuts, but then they have switched to cornstarch peanuts. So that's because of you. Um, they've always shipped in styrofoam. It kind of makes sense. Styrofoam doesn't break down, you know, in the presence of water. Plants are often wet. Um, it turns out the cornstarch peanuts are doing a pretty good job of getting plants there in good shape. So for the environment, um, we, uh, we're excited about that. We thank Grow and Sell for, for listening and adapting. Um, they figured out a way to return all their old styrofoam peanuts, and now we're on to, on to cornstarch. So we really do appreciate that. <clears throat> Talk about new varieties next. Um, one other thing to note from Grow and Sell, if you get your plugs on a pallet, <clears throat> that's usually if you have 30 or more uh, trays coming at the same time. Previously, it would automatically trigger that in the cart, but now you will pay for boxed shipping at the time of checkout. And I'll tell you why. With all these freight surcharges and diesel fuel fluctuating so much, um, we're actually seeing sometimes the freight costs more than receiving things in boxes. You know, three, four years ago, that wasn't the case at all. It was always a savings to ship on a pallet. Um, we love pallet shipping because they, they just can't tip over. They tend to get, they tend to arrive in perfect condition. Um, so if you're ordering a large quantity, now we have switched to an, uh, a process where we will contact you two weeks before your order goes out. Um, two weeks early, we can, we can actually get a quote um, an exact quote on what the freight shipping will cost. Now, you will have already paid box shipping. We would love to refund you some of that money if possible. Um, if, you know, if not, we will, you know, if you, maybe you just prefer to pay an extra $20 and have it come on a pallet because it's easier to unpack and the plants are going to be in better shape. But uh, freight and pallet shipping is no longer automatic when we ship from Grow and Sell. We will communicate with you directly about that to make sure that uh, the price works out for you. Um, I know poor, poor Shanti out in Arizona, every time we send a pallet out to her, it gets held up for some reason for, you know, sometimes an extra few days, but boxes always get there in three days. So sometimes the boxes do just travel faster as well. <clears throat> While we're on the topic of <clears throat> freight and shipping, <clears throat> Plug Connection actually has a lot of different ways they can ship. Um, we are estimating all of this based on FedEx shipping because that's how most people will receive it. Um, if your order is big enough, there is a possibility of putting that on a pallet. There's a possibility of it going on their own trucks or on local, more regional carriers. So you'll pay for the FedEx shipping up front, but then we hope to be able to refund you later. Um, I wish we could invoice you afterwards, but we don't want to hold your credit card number. And we just learned that a lot of you are really hard to chase down for additional fees. Um, sorry if that offends those of you who are very prompt about paying invoices. That's just the reality of it. It's easier to just collect it. And then we can refund if we have uh, overcharged. <clears throat> um, perfect. Yeah, generally the shipping, if you're ordering from the West Coast, you're going to save a lot of money over shipping from the East Coast. That just, just makes sense. All right, let me go to some slides. We all like pictures. So we're going to start with an item. Um, well, they wild perennial, we are not, <clears throat> these are not being grown in our big vernalized 32 cell perennial trees. Um, so everything I'm talking about now is coming from Grow and Sell, the same people you've been ordering from for years. Um, these are the Highlander Delphinium. Now these will be grown in a 50 cell tray. They call it the 50 cell uh, octagon. If you've, ever, if you've gotten Gerbera daisies from us or maybe status, 
Um, it's been grown in that tray. I'm trying to think if we've grown anything in that tray in the past. Those are the main items that we grow in this larger tray. So it's a full tray of 50 cells, but we cut it in half. So you, you, you can buy these by the 25, which will make it easier for you to uh, well, sample the different varieties. Um, four of those fit in a box. It's all detailed in the product description. Um, what's cool about these is that they're all doubles. So this one is a Highlander Bolero. Let me just show you another one. Next up, I believe, is Flamenco. See just how there's fully double to the middle. And next, um, aptly named Rainbow Sensation. A lot of really cool specialty colors, like I said, fully double. Um, they're called the Highlander series because they were bred by this uh, Scottish couple. They didn't really, they weren't gardeners at all. They, you can find this story online. They uh, were just putting into some shrubs and there's a lot of space in between the shrubs. So they thought, oh, well, maybe get a few perennials. Turns out they were really good at growing delphinium. They really loved them. Then they started breeding them. And now they've developed an entire series. It's one of the most popular series of delphinium worldwide. So this is part of the reason I always like to tell people, like, join a society, learn about plants, specialize in that one little thing that really, you know, makes your heart tick. Because maybe you're going to develop the next great strain of something. Um, so I'm excited to grow these myself. I haven't, uh, I've seen them, but I haven't personally grown them. Um, these are coming from tissue culture. Tissue culture always adds some money, some price, uh, increases the price. It's just a more laborious, more technical process, but it's really the only way we can get a lot of these uh, varieties you know, reliably year after year. So you'll see we're using, we're doing more and more stuff with tissue culture. It does often add a dollar or so to the plant over something that's seed grown, but um, we hope it's worth it in the end to be just to be able to access this stuff. It's either tissue culture or we don't have it at all. Um, other things to know about Highlander, only available weeks six through 10. Um, you can combine them with one other tray if you wanted to get two half trays of Highlander and you know some other item from the grow and sell plug catalog and just select the same ship week and that is very possible. Um, in terms of other plug products, so I talk about plugs versus perennials. Plugs are generally things that are, you know, pretty fast to grow, um, often grown from seeds. You know, we do some stuff from cuttings to like our scoop scabiosas and Veronica. Those are all grown from little cuttings, um, but they're grown in smaller, smaller size trays um, and shipped, you know, really quite affordably because they're so lightweight. Um, we will have some annual flocks. We're still waiting for exact varieties this year. First time we've had that. Um, some Coreopsis, the annual, uh, I'm forgetting the name at the moment, but I'll, if I remember, um, some new Snapdragon series, um, and some new Helichrysum strawflower in a, in a wider range of colors. You know, we kind of just had white and pink for a while, but, uh, you all requested it. So we, we have the seed on hand and we're ready to go. Um, there will be a couple of new Lizianthus. I'm not entirely sure which ones we're getting. Um, we're really checking on the seed, how the seed harvests have been worldwide, largely in Japan, and what's on the way. Like I said, we don't like to sell you something until we're really sure we can produce it. Um, that said, we have almost a thousand items in our catalog now. Sometimes we just don't have the seed on the right day to start your order. And then we always, we'll always contact you to figure out what plan B is. It's part of the fun of farming and of living things. All right, let's talk about hellebores now. <clears throat> so hellebores will be grown in our, um, we have two ways that we grow perennials, either in those 32 cell trays, big chunky, they, they call them the burly, uh, burly perennials. Um, we also grow them in an 18 cell tray. It's actually not a tray, it's 18 individual pots. Um, so some of our higher value crops like hellebores and alstroemeria, they go in these 18 cell trays just to give them enough room to really be happy. Um, I was really pleased with the, uh, the hellebores that were shipped out this spring. Um, they looked really great. I'm sure they've grown a lot for all of you this summer. Um, I'd be curious to see what the plants are looking like now. If, you're, if you've got a good looking hellebore patch, feel free to send us a photo. Um, but next spring, that's when you're really gonna see the difference. They're mostly been growing roots all summer and they're gonna flower like mad next spring. So just one year from transplant, they really bloom well. <clears throat> so these are the Ice and Roses series, sometimes part of the, called the gold, gold medal collection, I believe. 
or the gold collection hellebores. Uh, Alfen Heuger, the kind of preeminent German breeder of hellebores. Um, we had a lot of reds last year. Now this year we have a lot of pinks and whites and picotees. So this one is just called Picotee. Ice and Roses Picotee. Very nice. Um, we do have, we do still have some just glorious reds. <clears throat> Ice and Roses Red Romance. The, uh, these plants get big. Um, I give them at least 18 inches of space, maybe two feet. They'll become really like a bushel basket size. They're much bigger than the Orientalis hybrids. And once they're established, they will easily put out 10 to 15 stems per season. Unlike some hellebores that want to face down, these have been bred to face outwards or upwards, which is really helpful if you're doing bouquet work or you're selling to florists. Everyone likes a flower that looks back at you. Um, so we have more of the Ice and Roses series. That's the only series we had last year. This year we have more varieties and more, uh, just a bigger quantity. So that's really good news. Um, there's another new series, kind of a spin-off of Ice and Roses. This is the Ice and Roses Marble series. Uh, this is, I believe, Marble Megan, or Megan Marble. I don't know if it's supposed to be a Megan Markle uh, takeoff. Um, you can see the leaves have this neat veination. Some of them are kind of frosted. Um, you know, take a little time and Google these. They're really neat. The idea here is the flower is about the same. They get the same height, same vigor, <clears throat> but you could actually be harvesting some of that foliage. Hellebore foliage lasts really quite well after it's cut. I would probably wait until later and maybe start harvesting it, you know, autumn time. You don't want to cut all the leaves off because, well, that's where photosynthesis happens and it has to photosynthesize to grow those roots that then grow the flowers the next year. So, you know, you could probably cut a third to half of them off if you want, if you have a market for, for foliage. Um, otherwise you can, you know, just harvest the flowers and enjoy, enjoy the foliage. It's really beautiful even without the flowers. So there's a uh, Megan marble. I'm not actually sure we have that one, but they're all fairly similar. And then uh, next up is Mar Mary Marble. So you get a little sense of the foliage. Obviously the photo here is more about the flower, but a nice, nice Picotty, um, kind of a color range we didn't have last year. All right, then there's a new series, um, the Winter Ballet series. Again, they all look quite similar. They're in the range of, you know, whites, pinks, picotees, kind of purpley reds, and then reds. Uh, this one is called Liara. Um, the Winter Ballet, I think, all have L, L names. Winter Ballet can start flowering even in November, depending on where you live. So if you know anything about Hellebore species, Helleborus niger is the Christmas rose that flowers in the winter time. So these have certainly have niger in their background. They're kind of complex hybrids of a lot of species, but they've been bred to retain that trait of early flowering. <clears throat> now, where we used to live in Vermont, they would not bloom in November because, well, we'd be under snow. Um, but if you live in a mild place, maybe on the coast, or um, these probably would do very well, I don't in Georgia, maybe not the deep, deep south. If you have other hellebores that survive, these are gonna do great for you. Um, and in a warmer climate, they will actually bloom in November, December. You could also put them in your high tunnel if you keep a minimally heated tunnel, and that will give you some flowers uh, much earlier. It's just going to depend on your conditions. If I were to plant this outside in Vermont, it would go dormant with, you know, frost and freezes coming in October, November. It would just hang out under the snow until the snow melted, and then it will probably flower in May um, for someone who's, you know, way up in Vermont. So they're going to they're gonna live and survive and flower for everyone. The bloom time is going to be, you know, really quite different depending on where you are. Right, uh, that was called Liara. Let's look at, I believe a nice white one, pure white one called uh, Liz Lizanne. Um, I think that's really pretty. Helleborus niger is a pure white, so this, has, this looks a lot like niger to me, but it's just going to be taller and have a little more substance and a little more outward-facing habit. And then we have one more called uh, Layla, I believe. Yes. Um, again, just that nice, beautiful brick red. If you get this in flower for Christmas, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great if you're... Uh, you know, maybe you're selling into a Christmas market. That would be a really nice flower to have around. Nice flower to have at any time, really. 
All right, we've got one other big group of perennials to talk about here. These are the ones that were kind of the most requested after last year. So here's a brand new Echinacea. Um, we had a handful of double Echinaceas last year. They sold out really fast. We have a lot, lot more of them this year. Um, I hope we have enough to meet your demand. But this might be something that you go for kind of early in the ordering process. Um, you know, your seed grown plugs, they're not going to sell out on Monday. Um, but some of these perennials will. So you might want to start um, looking at some of these. This is Echinacea <clears throat> called Fresco Apricot. Um, this is bred by Terra Nova. They're a really top-notch plant breeder up in Oregon. <clears throat> really known for the heucheras. And eventually we will get you some tall heucheras with beautiful foliage for cutting. But they also do a really great job with uh, Echinacea. So Fresco, actually, you can't quite tell. It's, I don't even know if you call it double, triple. It has a really big kind of ruffle of of petals around the outside. It's not not single flowered. Sometimes a single echinacea is, you know, if you break or bruise a petal, it kind of ruins the symmetry and the, you know, maybe the, a bit of the usability of the flower. These have so many layers of petals, they could get a little bruised and you're not, you're never gonna see it. So um, I really like this fresco. In person, it has almost like a lavender iridescent flush to the apricot color. Um, really glows, really, sh really striking. I would love to do some design work with fresco apricot. Right. Another one from, oh, there's another picture of Fresco Apricot that shows you a little more of the double nature of it. Um, probably in its second year, it's going to start hitting two feet, two to three feet in height. Um, all of these fancier echinaceas are coming out of tissue culture, and they do take a little time to uh, kind of get their root system developed. The real problem is they're really, they want to flower at the same time as they're sending out roots. So there's kind of a, you know, both take energy. So it gets, takes an extra year. If you wanted to be uh, look, focus on the future. You could actually cut the flowers off and let them, uh, you know, focus their energy on the roots for a while before you uh, start cutting. Otherwise, just cut them. You can probably recoup the cost of the plant in your first year, and then you've got a well-established, well-producing perennial going forward. Okay, Echinacea um, Supreme Cantaloupe is another really nice variety from Terra Nova. We don't have tons of them this year. We'll hope to have a lot more next year. Um, again, big, tall, fully double. Uh, I love it. The color is just really nice. Um, from a different breeder, I believe Darwin Perennials, we have um, quite a few of these uh, double scoop echinaceas. These also get two feet, two feet plus. <clears throat> um, again, fully double to the middle of the flower. This one uh, is orange berry. There's several, there's an orange berry and a cranberry and a watermelon, and they all look kind of similar in the photos, but in reality, there are, there are differences to the shades. Um, Bubblegum, I think is one of the taller ones in this particular series. Um, just a nice clear pink. And then uh, this lemon cream, it's a really nice soft yellow. Uh, I'm seeing people like yellow a little bit more. We haven't had a yellow period uh, in floral design well, since before social media happened, I think. It's been a long time. So maybe it's time we have, uh, we promote yellow flowers a little bit. There's a lot of great ones out there that have been kind of overlooked. Their yellows tend to be one of the, some of the lower sellers in our series, but we are seeing the percentages uh, tick up. So let's all, I don't know, let's try to promote yellow. I think there's enough of us out there now. If we start showing yellow bouquets and featuring yellow flowers, uh, we can sort of break these trends. Um, I love peach, I love blush, but it's time to time to branch out a little bit. There's so many great flowers. All right, I have one more perennial to show you. Um, she's not new. This is the Japanese anemone, anemone hupahensis, or japonica, depending on um, what you want to call it. These are blooming right now. Um, they've been blooming maybe for a month in some places. Other places, they're just getting started. This is Honorine Jobert. It's a really old variety. The problem is they're a little slow to propagate. This is another one that is now in tissue culture so we can get more bigger quantities of it. So we have a lot of these available on Monday. So if you've been holding out for some Honorine Jobert's, um, these will be available in, a 30, in our 32 cell tray. 
Um, we got some Alstromeria as well. Alstromeria is grown in that 18 pack, just like Hellebores. Um, the 18 and the 32 cell trays, they can be combined in the same orders. For perennials, it's two trays per order. Um, you can place as many orders as you like. You know, if you're worried about something, get those two trays, check out. Get two more, check out. That's fine. That doesn't mess with our system at all. Um, and even in the plug side of things, if you realize you didn't fill the box, you can order another tray and just let us know. We can combine that and refund any extra shipping charges. We're pretty, we're pretty, uh, we're pretty friendly in that way. Um, oh, I see a question about the ruffled swan variety. We will not have that for spring shipping. Um, we had a little bit of it for fall shipping and we'll definitely have it for fall 2024. But uh, again, with these tissue culture products, sometimes the order does need to go in even a year in advance. And we just didn't have that order in quite in time. <clears throat> all right. If you all have any questions, now's a great time for it. I'm going to get out of photo mode here. Great. Um, Uh, how is petal retention on this anemone? None of them are great. Um, it's part of it's for the counterintuitive thinking of it's actually sometimes an advantage to have a flower that doesn't hold very well. Dahlias are the classic example of a flower that aren't really the best cut flower because they bruise so easily, but they're so luxurious that they are worth it. And you can grow them in, the, in your local market and deliver them fresh in the local market. Like anemone is kind of... Uh, kind of fall in the same category. They're a little bit fragile, but if you're not taking them far, um, they, don't, they don't really want to go in a box and be shipped across the world. They're going to fall apart. So these are, uh, you know, probably better for event work than they are for, you know, a weekly CSA bouquet kind of thing. Um, the flowers don't all bloom at once. So you always have some older flowers that are dropping their petals as the, as the other buds are opening. So just know that it's not going to be a big, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a two week flower. It's not one that it's not like, it's not a lisianthus. Um, but just cut them as their first opening. Maybe wait until that second rung of flowers is open. You know, many flowers that first, many plants that first flower, you might just want to trim it out because it's going to be dead by the time the next row is blooming. And then the, the additional buds will keep opening. And even the buds by themselves are just so lovely. Um, all right. We've gotten a couple of other questions. Oh, good. <clears throat> uh, okay. A couple Canadian questions here. Uh, let's talk about it. Actually, so Grow and Sell's never been able to figure out the Canadian shipping. Um, plug connection can. So this is new. We won't be able to just ship a box of plugs, you know, three or four or five trays to one address. What we will need to do um, for Canada is for you to work together and have orders shipped to an airport. Um, they'll go air freight from California to Canada, and then they could be d d divided up from there. Just by the time we put them in a box, if each of them gets stuck at the border for a customs and, you know, it, it, they can get held up for a really long time. And obviously we have to deliver them very quickly because these are living, living plants. So shoot us an email if you are Canadian interested um, in the products from Plug Connection. We can, uh, it's a good time to start that conversation. We will be happy to talk with you about it. It's something we've been wanting to do for a long time, but Grow and Sell had some bad experiences and they've never been able to figure out how to make that work. Um, Plug Connection has more experience in this realm and they, uh, yeah, and they're, they're, they, they routinely ship to Canada, generally larger orders. So it will be better if you can work with other people in your area, particularly if you live near one of the major airports. So there's a lot of caveats there. Um, it's not going to be as easy, but at least we have an option. We can get started with Canada. So I'm excited. It's always in Vermont, we lived 20 minutes from Canada, but we couldn't get plants there. It was very, uh, very frustrating. <laughs> um, got a little note here, I think from Thomas, the customer will have to coordinate with a freight coordinator in Canada to clear it through customs and then meet the order at a major Canadian airport to receive it. Um, there will also be a FIDO sanitary fee be $150, I'm assuming Canadian, um, or maybe that's probably actually American. <clears throat> um, but if you have 
you know, 100 trays coming together prorated, that's not too bad, okay? Um, some other questions here. Oh, Scott from the Flower Podcast. Uh, what's the production like on those Highlander delphiniums? I've heard that they, um, you know, they recommend maybe pinching out the very first flower. It's going to be a little bit weaker, but then the side shoots come up. And you'll probably get seven or eight flowering. You know, with delphinium in general, in general, if you are in the south or in a hot place, you want to plant your delphinium in the fall. And then you'll get maybe two flashes of flowering in the springtime. Um, if you're up in the north, you can plant it anytime. And then it's going to be a long-lived perennial, easily four or five years. Um, and you can cut probably three times per summer if you live in the north. So it depends a bit on where you are. If you have time for the plant to really mature and bulk up, um, you can get a lot of stems, you know, dozens of stems per season. Um, actually, with delphinium, often you remove more than half the, you know, when they're, when they're first coming up, you thin it down to three or four stems. So you just get three or four nice flowers rather than the plant trying to produce 10 or 12 um, kind of smaller, scrappier flowers. Um, but yeah, they've been selected for productivity and, you know, height, vigor, uh, obviously, obviously they're good looks. Um, so question from Pug Patch Flower Farm, how many echinaceas per tray? These echinaceas are um, all in the 32 cell, we call our burly perennials, big, big cell. Do, do, do. Um, people asking questions about planting Japanese anemones. Um, I would plant them as probably 14 or 15. So these, these vernalized perennials have gone through a cold period. They're going to be dormant. They're going to think that it's winter. So as soon as you think you can get in your soil, um, order them for that date. Um, a couple little details I forgot. Hellebores, Alstromeria, Echinacea, these three, they will start shipping in week nine. Week nine through 18. Echinacea, Hellebores, Alstromeria, nine through 18. Um, we have a couple new Alstromerias, so check that out. A couple new varieties in the same series. Um, our other perennials, the other vernalized perennials, also in these 32 cell trays, they can start shipping in week one. So week, weeks one through 18. So you can combine them as long as it's after week nine, but uh, just keep that in mind. Um, the Hellebores Echinacea are probably gonna be our most popular products. Um, in, in the perennial side of things, and they can't start shipping until week nine. So just keep that in mind. Let me go back up here. Um, Cedar Mill Farm asking about um, New England asters, New York asters. Um, they're probably flowering right now. Um, it's something I'm working on. Yeah, there are some really nice cut asters. You know, you see uh, in the in the wholesale world, Monte Cassino is the white flowering aster that's been around for a long time. It's all bred from you know native North American species, um, but they bred them into hot pinks and blues and whites, and they are available. I think now uh, they might be wrapped up in the whole chrysanthemum import. Um, they're very very closely related. Sometimes the pathogens that affect one can affect the other, <coughs> um, but it's something we're working on, and I hope. You would plant those in late spring, early summer anyway for flowering in the fall. So uh, we have time and it's something that is on my agenda. Um, Danziger, the people who brought us Scoop Scabiosa, they have some really nice cutting asters that are uh, not, not the China asters, but the, the smaller flower, more filler types, but the colors are so bright. I think you can use them in so many other ways than just as a filler. Um, a few products that aren't in the store right now that will be back, we hope, hope by Monday, but we're still waiting for confirmation from a few sources. Um, our Gerbera Daisy program, we will be repeating the Gerberas. Um, if you haven't been following Anna Jane at Little State Flower Farm, um, I think we have a Gerbera convert. She's doing a really good job. Um, she's a friend of mine and we've been communicating about this because they, they were kind of slow to get started until she really just started feeding them a lot and watering them more and then they just have been taken off and she's finally getting good harvests that should continue. Um, she's going to have them in a heated greenhouse. I think she can harvest probably all winter and in all of next year as well. So uh, Anna Jane's just fun to follow anyway. She's super enthusiastic and a really good grower. So check out Little State Flower Farm if you're not. Um, also send us, we love, tag us in your photos. We got some really beautiful um, Blue Chateau Lysianthus photos today. I'm sorry, I don't remember who they were from. Um, really nice photography. Good job. Good growing and way to capture it. 
Um, and also saw some really great cafe au lait last week that you all grew from our plants. So I, we, we love seeing what they what they turn into. Now that I'm not commercially growing cut flowers, it's really, um, I get really excited to see what you're producing. <clears throat> uh, someone, let's see, still even farms, uh, they're in Vancouver, Canada, asking if it's too late to sow hardy annuals for fall planting now. Um, you could, if you have like Bells of Ireland or Larkspur, these kinds of things, poppies, you could throw them out. Um, a lot of them will just germinate in the cold soil. Now's a great time to be transplanting um, in your area, even for the next few weeks. But if you haven't started them yet, you can't transplant them. Um, it says you're zone eight, so that's a fairly mild winter. Um, if you can give them a little protection, you know, if you got the seed, it's just the cost of the seed and your time that you're uh, that you're gambling with. So I would say give it a try, but in general, you probably would have wanted to start, um, you know, six or eight weeks ago. Thanks for your patience. I'm just uh, looking around here. Okay, Garden to Table asks, my monk's hood is about to burr seven feet tall. Stems are so strong and still standing after Ophelia with no staking. Maybe we used to sell monk's hood through our previous perennial program. Uh, monk, monk's hood, aconitum, um, delphinium relative, um, really rugged and hardy once you get it going. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, maybe we should be offering Monk's Hood again. I, uh, it's something that's not kind of always in the front of my mind as a cut flower, but I used to have a few on, on our farm in Vermont and I, I would often cut them. <clears throat> um, can Alstomeria be dug up and replanted in zone seven? I assume this question is about, this is a cluster flock flowers, clever, um, about hardiness. These Alstomeria are probably hardy in zone seven, especially if you give them some mulch. Um, if you're just talking about wanting to move them somewhere else, uh, yeah. I've, I've been growing some Alstroemeria here in Madeira. They're really vigorous. Um, actually, I almost spread too far, so I'm being careful about where I plant it. Um, the roots are kind of crazy looking when you dig them up, but they tend to establish really fast and even start flowering really quickly. Um, so I would say if you're in zone seven, you probably don't need to dig them up and protect them. I would just maybe pile some mulch on, have some mulch ready right before things get really cold. <clears throat> but these varieties have been bred for some hardiness. Um, okay, a Nutty Brown Farm. Any information on Lizzie Anthus in darker colors? Um, I'd be happy to know more. Um, dark purples generally don't sell very well for us. We do sell them. If you're talking about the kind of purple black and dark brown, uh, the Roseanne series is about the only place <clears throat> you're gonna find that. <clears throat> we do have a new Lusianthus coming called Puccino, I suppose short for Cappuccino. Um, it is a single flowered brown and kind of purple black of the two colors in that series, um, along the same lines as Roseanne in its coloration. <clears throat> uh, they're single flowered, not double flowered. If you remember Wondrous, which was actually came out before Roseanne, I don't think I don't think we had them in the U.S. before Roseanne. As I recall, I brought them at the same time. Um, I believe this is the one that they're calling Bohemia. I've gotten some requests asking for Bohemia Lysianthus. Bohemia is kind of a marketing name from a Dutch grower. It's not an actual variety name. The actual variety is Puccino, and we will have that available uh, on Monday for ordering for shipping in 2024. Um, if you know of other dark color Lysianthus that you're looking for, by all means, send us a photo or a variety name. I'm happy to see what's out there. Um, we do have some kind of reds. We have some deep pinks, um, dark purples, and we have these black purples and also uh, terracotta and uh, deep brown in the Roseanne series. So those are the darkest ones I know of, but I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more out there that I haven't found yet. All right, everyone. Is any more questions about what uh, what to expect? Now is your chance. Um, like I said, hit that button if it's you know if it's something that runs out of stock and you know you want it next time it comes in stock, you'll be the first notified. And also that does help us with our crop planning. So please use that little uh, notify me function. It really helps us out. 
Um, take some time between now and Sunday to just kind of poke around the three different stores that you can shop right now. Um, like I said, there will be more coming. Um, I haven't talked about our woody perennials. We will have some nice woody perennials coming. Um, we will have some bare root perennials coming. Um, a still be um, peonies. Um, those come to mind offhand. Um, but we're going to get through this. You know, the, the the big spring the big spring rush starts in October, and then probably by November we'll have some of these other products. They've already been secured. They're on the way to the U.S. No big problem. Uh, let's see, Michael here is asking, will we have Caryopteris again? Yes, Caryopteris is a product uh, that comes from Danziger. Um, it needs to be planted in spring, summer for fall flowering. I meant to cut some. We have some blooming here in our yard. Um, I think plenty of you probably have it flowering as well. Um, side note, I was in Israel back in April. I went to visit Danziger's headquarters and see their breeding work and their trials. Um, it turns out that Farmer Bailey customers are the biggest consumers of their Caryopteris in the world. So uh, <laughs> good job, guys. It's not maybe a big commercial product in Colombia and Ecuador, which is wonderful. Um, so we will uh, definitely have Caryopteris again, I hope. I hope in four, three, at least three or four varieties. Um, let's see a little question. Did I just say a still, a still be? Yes, we will have some bare root. A still be for spring shipping. Um, like I said, we just needed to get these new stores up and running for uh, the October ordering, and then we'll be talking about a still be, <clears throat> still be peonies. On the woody side, we'll have um, winterberry holly. We will have um, calicarpa beautyberry um, and a handful of others. Some really nice stuff coming from Holland. Uh, yes, yes. Heather's Flower Farm, Magical Snowberries. Yeah, Symphoricarpus Snowberry. We have, I think, nine different varieties coming. Um, Rabbit Crest Farms asks, how is the eucalyptus stock this year? I've heard there's been some harvests. Um, there's more available this year than there has um, lately. So uh, I'm still waiting for my exact, <clears throat> my exact number of trays that we will be able to offer. Um, but I think it is looking up. I think there might even be some silver dollar back this year. We haven't had silver, silver drop, excuse me. I think we, we haven't had silver drop for a few years. And I think, I think it's coming. So, uh, fingers crossed. Um, okay. The bloom flower farm, how big will these shrubs be? They're going to be about a foot tall with the root system to match. They're, um, they were transplanted in Holland earlier this year. They'll be dug this fall. Um, they shear them back a couple times. So they get really branched and really nice. I have, I have photos of the of the exact plants in Holland that will be shipped to your door in America. Um, really nice quality stuff from Colster. Colster breeds any of the magical line of, um, well, they've actually bred these woody plants for cutting, which is really, really great. Um, yes, they will be bare root, they'll be dormant. So bare root is great um, for shipping costs. You're not trying to ship a lot of heavy soil. The plant's dormant, so it doesn't mind being in a box for a couple extra days. So we're really excited to bring those to you. All right, everyone. Um, like I said, you see problems or something that doesn't make sense on the website, let us know. Shoot us a message. Um, uh, yeah, info at farmerbailey.com. There's four of us, uh, honestly, kind of looking around the, watching around the clock um, right now. We're on different, all different time zones, so we tend to get back to your emails pretty fast, so let us know. Um, Sorry, another question popping over here. Will the snowberry be bare root? Yes, it will be bare root. The ilex will be bare root. Um, great. Uh, Heptacodium, great, um, great suggestion. Didn't have access to it this year, but I'll keep uh, keep my eyes out. Um, all right. Happy ordering. Take a deep breath. We've got a lot of plants for you. I'm not going to sell out. They won't sell out immediately. If you're worried about it, start with. You know, maybe your Highlander Delphiniums on the plug side, and then your Echinaceas, and maybe Hellebores. We got a lot of Hellebores though, on the perennial side, and then you can go back and you know do your Eucalyptus and your Lysianthus. Um, those seed-grown items, we have a lot more flexibility in how many trays we can share. Um, great, thanks everyone. Uh, come back next week. Usually we're a little off schedule. But we're going to talk with Steve and Mandy of Three Porch Farm all about their heirloom mums. Um, you can start ordering those on Monday. But uh, 
next Wednesday, they will actually be live with me to talk about them. So that's, I'm looking forward to that very much. All right. Thanks. Bye.